Hi, thanks for joining me on Soap Queen TV. I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous infinity swirl. This design requires straight lines of color. It's easy to make them with Brambleberry's multi-pore sectioning tool. Of course, you can always create dividers for yourself out of cardboard if you don't have access to this tool. If you decide to go the cardboard route, make sure that you just anchor the ends of this cardboard divider set. Otherwise, the cardboard goes a little wonky. These dividers fit perfectly into the Brambleberry 5-pound sliding bottom mold. They're made out of heat-resistant plastic, so no warping or melting here. Use these dividers to layer two, three, or even four colors side by side. This is a perfect base to create a mantra swirl, the Taiwan swirl, or yes, this infinity swirl. This technique works best with a recipe that stays at a nice light trace. For that reason, this recipe has a lot of liquid oils. For extra moisture, I've added chia seed oil to this recipe. Chia seed oil is very high in omega fatty three acids, making it an ideal skin product. I wanted lots of contrasting colors for this recipe, so I'm using non-bleeding pigments. Ultramarine blue, black oxide, fired up fuchsia, ultramarine violet, and titanium dioxide. Finally, I'm scenting this recipe with a combination of crisp Anjou pear fragrance oil from Brambleberry and lime fragrance oil. The combination of this is fruity and refreshing, and best of all, these fragrances don't accelerate trace, giving you plenty of time to work with this recipe. If you've never made cold process soap before, I want you to stop and watch the first four episodes of Soap Queen TV, or just read the first chapter on lye safety and soap making basics in my soap crafting book. It's important before you undertake this intermediate project that you have a few successful recipes under your belt and understand about lye safety. Before we get started, we need to disperse our colorants in a little bit of lightweight oil. Take one teaspoon of the oxide or pigment that you're using and disperse it into one tablespoon of lightweight oil. Here I'm using sweet almond oil, but you can use any lightweight oil such as sunflower oil. Using a mini mixer or a latte frother, push the colorant down into the oil with your mixer. You don't want any poofs of color coming up when you turn on that mixer. I am not a big fan of washing dishes, so I'm working from lightest to darkest, so that way I can use the same tool for all the colorant mixing. Mix until the color is fully dispersed. You want to work out all the clumps, because if you have clumps in the soap, when you cut the soap at the end, you'll end up with streaks of color down your soap. So keep mixing until all those clumps are worked out. If you'd like more practice, or information on how to pre-mix your colorants, I do have a Soap Queen TV short on just that. Next, we're going to make our fragrance blend. One word of warning, make sure you're mixing this in a glass container. Take it from me, if you use plastic or styrofoam, the fragrance or essential oil can and will eat through the plastic, leaving you with a messy pool of oil all over your work area. This fragrance oil blend is one part crisp on pear to two parts lime. So in this case, it's 1.3 ounces of crisp Anjou pear to 2.2 ounces of lime by weight. Set your pre-mixed colorants aside and that fragrance oil blend. Before you get started soaping or suit up for safety, you want to make sure your mold is fully put together. So double check those dividers. Are they all in place? If you're using cardboard dividers, have you taped down the sides nicely so they won't move? Now it's time to gear up for safety. I've got my long sleeves on and long pants, my apron, and I'm soaping in an area where no kids or pets have access to that has great air ventilation. Gloves on and soap clean goggles. My lye water and my oils are about 120 degrees each, which is the perfect mixing temperature for this recipe. I'm gonna do one additional step here before I combine my oils and my lye water. 
Since this mold uses a silicone liner, the soap can take a little bit longer to harden up. And by a little bit longer, I mean it can take up to a week or two to get out of the silicone liner without tearing the soap. Sodium lactate helps with that. Sodium lactate is the sodium salt of lactic acid. It's commonly used as a food preservative. The usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oils in your recipe. Add the sodium lactate directly to your lye water. For this recipe, we're using right around three teaspoons of sodium lactate. Give it a good stir. And now you're ready to combine your lye water and your oils. Carefully mix your lye water and your oils together. I like to pour the lye water down the shaft of my stick blender to help avoid bubbles. Remember to burp your stick blender before turning it on. If you don't, you're going to mix all of that air that's in the head of the stick blender into your soap. It's just an aesthetic thing, but when you cut the soap and there's lots of air bubbles, it looks like white little dots in the soap. Then stick blend just in a short 20 or 30 second burst until you hit very, very light trace. We need a lot of time to work with this recipe, so you want to just stop at a very light trace when the soap is barely emulsified. When the batter has reached extremely light trace, split this off into four even containers. Notice the containers I'm using have long pouring spouts. This helps to get in between the dividers. You can get these containers from brambleberry.com. Now, let's color our soap batter. Into the first container, add one half teaspoon of black oxide. In your second container, add two teaspoons of the dispersed titanium dioxide. In the third container, add 1.5 teaspoons of the dispersed ultramarine blue. In the fourth container, add one teaspoon of the dispersed ultramarine violet. Then, add one fourth teaspoon of the dispersed fired up fuchsia. And finally, add one teaspoon of the dispersed titanium dioxide. Before I add the fragrance, I'm just gonna give these colorants a quick whisk from lightest to darkest. Again, I whisk from lightest to darkest so I have less dishes at the end. Now that my colorants are fully mixed in, I'm dividing the fragrance oil blend evenly between the four containers. I'm just eyeballing it. Mix with a wire whisk to make sure you stay at a nice thin trace. Now it's time to pour these into the mold. You can use any colorant order you wish, but for maximum contrast, we used black, pink, white, and blue in that order. Because I don't want the dividers losing their grip on the bottom, I just pour about halfway up and then I'm moving into the middle two colors. Okay, and now that the middle two colors are about halfway full, I'm gonna move over to the end colors. And finally, finishing up with the middle. Now notice the middle colorants are just a little bit taller than the outside. That's okay, watch what happens next. Make sure that your work surface has some place to put these sopping wet dividers. So, I like to just use a cutting board, but you could use cardboard as well. Now it's time to take out our dividers. The first step is just to take out this large spacing bit. So, here we go, pull straight up and out, and place that to the side. Then, take a deep breath, put both of your hands, remember you are still wearing gloves, Put both of your hands on either side of the divider and pull straight up and put it to the side. And now you just have the two side dividers to do. One, and now we're out. Whew. Almost there. See what I mean about that middle part being taller? It's okay, because the soap flows perfectly. Just take the two end pieces out. Wiggle that to get it loose from the silicone, and it's out. And take the other end piece out. And there you go. Look at those lines. They are so gorgeous. They are straight and perfect. And wow, I love the color and order we did it in. This soap looks great as it is, but now it's time for the magic. We're gonna do the infinity swirl. Insert your chopstick or skewer or dowel all the way down to the bottom of the soap and start slowly drawing figure eights in a beautiful curving infinity pattern. Be slow so you can be smooth and even. Any choppiness or stops and starts will show up in the design of your soap. If this is the first time you've done the swirl, definitely practice it a few times. Earlier, I was practicing it using this white piece of paper and a marker. Isn't this pretty? The design is somewhere between a mantra swirl and a Taiwan swirl, and it's got loops and waves, and the pattern is gorgeous. I can't wait to see it unmolded. 
The finishing touch is a spritz of 91 to 99% rubbing alcohol to help prevent soda ash. If you're using a silicone liner, allow this soap to sit in the mold for an extra 7-ish days. If you're using a traditional wooden mold with a regular wax paper or freezer paper lining, you can probably unmold after 2 or 3 days. I made this loaf a couple weeks ago and it's ready to cut, but first I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the freshly poured soap versus the soap that's been sitting a couple weeks. Wow, look at that color difference. You can see it's a lot more pastel since the soap is more opaque now that it's sat and cured. Let's unmold the soap. Gently slide the bottom of the mold out and plop goes the soap. I like to use a cutting mat with a grid to help me accurately cut straight lines. Unmold the soap by gently pulling the silicone liner away from the sides. This next cut is where the soap really shines. If you cut the soap vertically, it's still a really interesting, nice looking bar of soap. However, cutting it horizontally produces something extra special. Make your first cut two to two and a half inches down. Twist off the soap, never pull. If you pull, you can tear the soap. Twist off the soap. Turn it over on its side. Now, make a one inch cut. And there you go. Two unique bars of soap from the same cut. Allow these soaps to cure and harden for four to six weeks and then you're ready to sell them, use them, or give them away. Until next time, thanks so much for joining me on Soap Queen TV. Happy soaping!